So we've been worried about sanding this uh, project I recruited the last couple of nights. You know, it was sold to the customer as a rust-free car, and damn it, it is a rust-free car. It was like making a deal with the devil, you know? Okay, no rust on this thing. How about some crash damage, right? This thing was sideswiped, both sides. From what we understand, it was a rental car it, 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 when, it was in, when it was new. So it was like, it was crashed, it was patched back together again, it was crashed. There's like three layers of Bondo and paint in a lot of different places. So, but we'll, we'll be digging more into the bodywork next week. For right now, I just want to show you guys, bring you up to speed on what we've done with the, with the basic car itself. So I'll start back here, I'm closer. So the rear is a 68 to 70 B-body housing. Um, it's actually a natural fit for these cars. They have a nice broad open wheel opening. Uh, and if you build on a duster, by the way, the B-body rear fits the, the duster quarter pedal better than the A-body rear does. You get rid of that weird, like, narrow rear end thing. Uh, but anyway, that's what this is. It's out of a 69 Roadrunner. Um, the springs are the standard Chrysler Superstock springs. It's old school stuff. These things have been in the catalog and like unchanged since like 1970. The main feature of the Superstock spring, instead of having, in addition to having an extra leaf on the passenger side, is that the passenger side is arced an extra two inches than the driver's side. It makes the car sit with the passenger side up uh, at rest. But what happens is, when you give it gas, and engine torque tries to lift the left front of the car, at the same time, rear axle is twisting in the opposite direction and is trying to pull the, the tire up into the wheelhouse. And that arc separates them. When you give it gas, it disappears, and the back of the car just leaves evenly. Um, and that's pretty much it back here. It's a very simple, straight, straight old school stuff. We'll be using a set of three-way adjustable drag shocks. The car will get a pinion snubber when we run slicks, and no pinion snubber when it's on a street tire. And we're going to get into that whole pinion snubber thing uh, in another episode. There's a lot of weird science involved in that. Um, let's see, moving forward, a lot of people put frame connectors in everything, right? And I don't. For me, mostly it's because it adds complication and it adds weight in the place where I don't want weight in the car. Frame connectors on a short wheelbase a bearing, like this 108 inch wheelbase Barracuda, are almost nonsensical. Uh, unless it's a trans brake, drag radial car, dead hook, tons of power, you're not going to twist it. If you're talking about a 117 inch wheelbase B body Dodge, let's just say, that uh, hard top that doesn't have the post, yeah, then you may get some twisting. But for something like this, I don't add them unless it's absolutely necessary. I don't add anything to a car unless it's absolutely necessary. If you see something on a car that I put there, it's there for a damn good reason. Um, up front, this is another little departure from what I usually do myself. I use drum brakes on all my cars, but I'm not driving this one. So we went with uh, standard 73 and up A-body discs in the front, uh, mostly because you know, if you're a drum brake guy, you know to make the adjustments, you know to compensate if it steers a little bit. Uh, if you're not, these things will just stop straight every time, so we leave it at that. We, uh, we did open up the, the fender wheel and this section right here for the fender wheel headers. Uh, can you get in there and see that? This has to be clearanced for the collector to come down and pass through. Um, and other than that, in the front end we used a set of six ohm torsion bars. And uh, the reason you use six cylinder bars is because they store more energy. The six cylinder bar has to get twisted a little bit tighter than the eight cylinder bar. And what that does is to maintain the height. So what happens is when the car launches and starts to transfer weight rearward, that bar unsprings itself a little bit harder and helps lift the front end. And to work along with that, we've also removed the upper bump stops from the upper control arms. And what this does is it allows the wheel assembly to drop out an extra inch and a half, almost two inches. Because it's the unsprung weight here that limits the car's ability to raise the front end. Um, of course, if you got enough traction and enough weedies, those front wheels are coming off anyway. But 
the, the more you can let it separate from the suspension before you move forward, the better. And again, this is for a street strip type of car. And this is valid to run in down, let's say, into the high nine second zone. Uh, there are many different ways to skin the cat, but this is the old school way. If you want to know what people like Sox and Martin and Dick Landy and, and all these other people run, were running in their pro stock setups in like 1970 and 1971, this is it, exactly. The only other thing with the front of the car, uh, for my money, there's only one good shock to use in the front of a Mopar, and it's a dead shock. You don't need it. Uh, torsion bar suspensions aren't springy like coil springs are. They don't float around the way they do, so they don't really need that damping, especially in a straight line application, the way a General Motors or a Ford type or a coil spring type car would. So basically what you do is you just take a set of shocks, uh, you drill a small hole in the bottom, let the oil out. This way you keep the rules guys happy. The tech guy says, oh yeah, you got shocks in there. But they really don't do anything. They don't serve a purpose in the front of these cars except to carry a lot of weight. Um, yeah, people are going to argue with that, but it works and it's worked for generations. Um, but that's pretty much it, you know. It's, a, it's about as simple and old school, basic, foolproof uh, setup as you're possibly going to get. It's traditional hot rod ballpark. And uh, next week we'll talk about some of the other things we're doing with drivetrain and take a look at the interior. Because it's not, it's not a, a, a drag car, you know, it's still a street car. He wants to be able to cruise it and all of that. Um, and we'll talk about some of the concessions we made along those lines. So until then, talk to you later.